Hi, Paul. Hello, Jake. We're at I.O. We made it. We made it across the, the narrow sea. Yeah, uh, and big planey wings. We actually yeah. made it. Yeah, oh, yeah, we we landed. It out. I know. So, um, did, did you enjoy the, the, the keynote yesterday? Yes. Was that, was that I, good for you? It was, actually. I was, um, I was looking at that massive screen around the whole thing, and I was like, I've got to get one for home. I don't know yes. why. Well, I, I can't even justify that to my to my family. But but they don't release films in that that aspect ratio. You're gonna have a trouble. I mean, you're just gonna basically see like ah. a pair of eyes. Oh no, you've got a plan. No, I haven't got a plan. Although, what I think is maybe if you got one of those GoPro rigs that they showed. Oh, the ones where on on the cardboard segment. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was amazing. I've got to find a business justification for getting one of those in my life. I I don't know. Maybe I need a. Uh, a stereographic uh, version of my, my my toilet at home or something. <laughs> what would you? What would you? Hang on. I, actually, I know. Like, so, I, I I I'm uncomfortable going to the toilet in in unfamiliar places. So, what what are you going to do? If, home, like, if home are you, home. you're going to have that set up at home. Yep. So when you're on the toilet in a strange place, you can wear a cardboard. Yeah. Yeah. And have a live link. Yeah. Back to back to home, or and, just and get one of those screens installed around the place, so I can just have that. You know. Oh, perm <laughs> around. I'm not quite sure how this works out, but I think it's it's very important. Um, I also noticed uh, in the keynote that um, if you stop talking, um, people start applauding. Yeah, that I must be really awkward for a presenter because you have to just keep making noises. Blah 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 blah. Because blah. Because otherwise, blah. Just, just yeah, like a, a, an applause erupts out and spreads, especially for the audience. The there was another thing I noticed as well that um, when there was an, a, an applause mm. uh, erupted. Uh, the camera would switch uh, to, to the audience to pick up that reaction, but the cameraman had always found a section of the audience looking completely indifferent. Yes, yeah, um, I, not quite sort of, yeah, I, sort of, I was like, where's the applause coming from? Is it, is it an applause track? I don't yeah, know. yeah, well, sometimes, it, sometimes it's just an audience that's like, yeah, whatever. But then occasionally you get a section of people who, they almost looked like they were trying to work out who just farted, you know? <laughs> like there was a sort of like, <laughs> so I looked at that that said, I mean, there were some amazing announcements yesterday. Mm. Like, um, well, what did you notice? Let me ask you that. Oh, I would say, uh, from an engineering perspective, my favorite thing was uh, the Google Photos. Yes. Because uh, I went away and I was playing around with, like, uh, you know, just doing the searches, like, uh, search you know, for cats, you know, yeah. obviously the obvious. And, and then, but even more complicated things, like, you know, yellow car, and it was bringing up photos that I'd taken that were of really? those things. I, it, it is, it's kind of creepy. It's almost like it's starting to get self-aware. Like, uh, I hope, I hope they've got like a pair of like pliers next to the cable for that, the computer that's <laughs> that, doing all that. That is always the mistake when you've got an apop apocalyptic computer takeover. Yep. Nobody remembers that you've got to be able to cut the power. Yeah, and if that thing gets into the wild. It, it can, you know, and become self-aware, it's going to be identifying yellow cars everywhere, yeah, the, and what, that's what, going to be what, a problem. What happens next? Nobody knows what happens next after it identifies all the yellow cars. It's probably just going to sit there idly going, no more yellow cars. <laughs> yellow car, like, red car, cat. Yeah. And, and, but that will somehow lead to the apocalypse, yeah, so yeah, that's something it, to look forward to. It kind to. of has to. Um, I noticed uh, Chrome Custom Tabs. That, yes. really, that really caught my attention. Mm -hmm. um, because I was thinking about it, it's like, today, when you've got the Twitter native app, on Android, you can tap into a link there and it will load up the web view. Um, and then you can then go to Twitter, like follow some links, go to Twitter. And then it'll ask you to sign into Twitter in a web view inside the Twitter native app. And like, yeah. it's Twitter inside of Twitter inside of Twitter. Inside. And, and browsing, browsing the web in a, a web view, it kind of makes me, it makes me a bit nervous. Well, it, it's a problematic because you don't have the same cookie jar, the same cache, the same yes. service worker, local storage, all of those things. Uh, but I, I, it worries me when I see a login screen in a web view in an app because yeah. I don't have access to the URL. I'm like, well, that looks like a Google login screen or a Twitter login but screen. But is it? Right. And you don't want to find out. You don't want to be going like, yeah, I just gave my, that password away. But generally, it just felt like it was a really good match of this is Chrome. It is Chrome, as you sort of expect. Yep. But from a user or a, a, even a, a product point of view, it's like it's branded such that you, it feels like it's part of the experience you're currently having. It felt like a really good understanding yep. of you know, you want the web to be part of a native experience, and then you know, it just felt like a really good way of doing that. So hopefully, I think we'll we'll see more people targeting. So, that. so one of the things that we that we've seen uh, be uh, proposed or start to come out recently is uh, Facebook instant articles, right? Mm. Uh, and and I know I don't know about you, but because I'm such a fan of the web, I, I was a little bit worried about that because it's like you know they're saying oh the web's not good enough, so we've kind of reinvented it. Right. And if you look at the the, the JSON uh, for something like Facebook instant articles. Like they, they'll have like an, a, an object that represents a paragraph. Oh. It will have a type, and the type will be in capital letters paragraph, and it's got a little bit more metadata, and then the text for the paragraph. 
it's actually more verbose than really? HTML. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the, thing, the reason it, it becomes fast is things like it's able to preload it, or warm it up, and it does kind of uh. stop. It doesn't have the features of the web that make the web slow. It's, it's not inherently faster than the web, but you, know, you can't put eight iframes within iframes. So it's can't. like skirting around those kind of potential foot guns. Yeah. Right. Oh, so I'm kind of okay. really excited about the custom tabs thing from that perspective, because you, you know, within the app, you can warm up the browser, you can warm up the content, so you get that instant feel. But it is kind of down to developers to go that extra mile and, well, no, not even go the extra mile, it's to walk back the extra mile <laughs> and not do the stuff that <laughs> slows the web down. <laughs> yeah, re reverse, reverse. Like, take, take all those you know, nested iframes and scroll handlers out. Talking to the beeping thing, I was walking past the street here and it was just walking along a, a, on the, the sidewalk and uh, all of a sudden it just went wah, 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 wah. And it was like, there's a car coming, don't die. Yeah, I was like, that's a good instruction for, for I, life. It, I felt like it was a very helpful thing. It, what was more concerning was that the volume of the thing was, it was so sudden and so loud. You actually jumped out into the road by accident <laughs> and got mowed down by an oncoming bus. It felt like there was a sort of, there was a, it could have done with a little bit of easing in there. Yeah. It just felt like the, the user experience was, don't die, but you might die but from the thing telling you not to die. So I, there's so many people here. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. And I don't know about, you, but I mean, I'm I'm a nerd. I'm a proper nerd. I had noticed. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I have all of the the social foibles that that come with that. And we've been meeting a lot of people and saying, you know, saying hi, talking about the web. And mm. I just feel like that amount of like sort of new people, but also people I haven't seen in a long time. I'm feeling like I've got a really high error rate when yes. it comes to social encounters. Absolutely, they're no, exactly the same. And I don't know quite what to do about it because it's like I want to be here and I want to meet with you and I want to talk with you but my ego can't really cope with the fact that I'm just doing a terrible job of being a human yeah. being, a sociable human being. It's like, yeah. normally they, like, they edit us when we do sort of videos and all the rest of it to make us actually seem pretty normal. Like normal, yeah. yeah. So like, I'm finding my, someone will come in and I'll say, I'll say hello wrong. Something as simple as Flat that. And then in my mind, I'm like, oh, you messed up a hello. Like, it's only going to go downhill from here. Oh, your brain goes into the two track thing, right? Where you're like, uh, yeah. like the Running one who's, commentary for how terrible a job you're doing at life. The, uh, the, the worst one of those that ever happened to me was I was on stage and I actually managed to dislocate my shoulder. It's something I've done enough times now that it can happen to me. <laughs> you, it's, it random. almost sounds like you do it on purpose. No, I've done it, but well, yeah, sometimes just like think, the, got the t-shirt, got nothing else to do for the next hour. I might just pop the shoulder yeah, out, pretty much. Yeah. So there, but I, and I dislocated it, and I'm in front of all these people, and I was just, and my brain went into that two track. The one part went, Paul, you've dislocated your shoulder, mate. This is not good. And the other one was, I always think is more of a thespian voice. Went. The show must go on. <laughs> Be the hero of the stage. Keep pretty going. much, pretty much. And so at that point, I was just like back in and I was just <laughs> as and cool I, as cucumber yeah, and I, pop the shoulder back in and I spoke to people after and I was like did you realize that I dislocated my shoulder and they were like no and I was like well at least I can cover that that's uh it's not really a resume skill uh if I'm honest but it's there have you seen did you watch x-files when you were younger yes are you, are you using Victor Tombs? <laughs> Is that, are, you, are you going to stretch down and into a <laughs> chimney and kill people at night <laughs> I, I sincerely hope not um uh, anyway back to the web one of the other things that sort of, um, some of the sessions and so on, and they've got, got into things like Service Worker. Mm. That's been uh, nice wow. to come back for, obviously, you're the one trick pony when it comes to the Service Worker. Of course, so it's um, great to, to hear that mentioned loads in the session, but just like the sort of the, the practical uses of it, like rather than, so what it was last year when we were presenting about it is it was just like- a, a, Coming a, soon. Yeah, and a couple of Googlers going, hey, look, we kind of made a thing using a prototype. We think it's going to be okay. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes. Hope, hope we don't break the web. And now we're seeing people like Leon the Guardian using it for, for push messages, you know, yep. or if you're using it just to, to make performance better. Right, because it's the gating for, for like the push messaging and notifications and all that kind of stuff. It's like HTTPS, service worker, blah, blah, blah. And you kind of, we're starting to build up, I think, re a really strong re-engagement story off the back of it. It's not just like you get fast bootstrapping, you get stuff that works offline, but you can now start to kind of say to your users, like, would you like me to keep you updated on, on any of these things? Mm. Yeah, so that is very exciting, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you were talking about performance as well. Like you've, you've been talking about like what, what makes a, like a, a website fast, like the whole yep. rail so thing. We've been talking about rail, which is response, animation, idle, and load, and how you can think about app and site performance and, and bring all that together. So that's gone down really well. People are starting to kind of go, yeah, I understand. You know, it's, uh, it's put the user at the, the middle of your performance model. So that's been really nice to kind of share with the, the attendees here. And hopefully we'll get more uh, about that soon. Do you think that's going to happen? We're going to get a faster web out of this because that's what we want, right? One can only hope. Um, <laughs> but in the meantime, you know, here's to another year of the web and I.O. To the web. <laughs>